everybody and welcome to this podcast on the second Sunday of the Kingdom, November the 6th. And I'll begin as usual with the notices. So next service in Penkhoid will be on Wednesday the 9th of November at 10 o'clock in St. David's. Um, once again, our joint service at St. Kynes was a great success. And the next one will be at St. John's in Aberkenfig on the 20th of November. So come along and meet some new people and just listen to the singing. Uh, we're still doing Zoom coffee on Thursday mornings at 11 o'clock. We have a chat and a pray and we also sing along to some well-known hymns in the privacy of our own homes where no one else can hear us. And if you heard my voice, you'd be glad. Come and join us if you fancy a bit of company on a Thursday morning. Contact me for details of codes to join. So you could phone on 07592149538 or you could email me at revblender at lphparish.org.uk. You can find these details on the website or in the parish magazine. The next Chat and Craft Club meeting will be at 2 o'clock on Tuesday the 8th of November at St David's Hall. We are a friendly chatty bunch who love to welcome newcomers. Tuition is provided by Judy and all materials are provided. If you wish to bring your own craft on it in, please feel free to do so. It's good sometimes to do these things in company with others. Or if you don't want to do craft on it, but you just want to come along for a coffee or tea in a chat. Crafting is not compulsory. Everybody is welcome. No need to book for this. Just come along. Now, we did have a very successful Open the Book visit to Pencoy Primary School last month. It was great fun with adults enjoying it as much as the children. And many of the staff commenting it felt like the world was getting back to normal. If you haven't done it before but would like to join, or if you would like to rejoin the group, please let us know by phoning mm -hmm. me on 07592149538 or email me at revblender at lphparish.org.uk. And again, you can find these details on the website or in the parish magazine. And we'll now have our reading for this morning. Today's Gospel reading is from, taken from St. Luke, chapter 20, starting at verse 27. Glory to God, our Saviour. Some of the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus. But the question, teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife with no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman and died childless. The second and then the third married her, and in the same way the seventh died, leaving no children. Finally the woman died too. Now, then at the resurrection, whose wife will she be, since the seventh were married to her? Jesus replied, the people of this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage, and they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. They are God's children. Since they are children of the resurrection, but in the account of the burning bush, even Moses shows that the dead rise. For he calls the Lord, O God of Abraham, 
and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For to him are all are alive. Praise to Christ our Lord. And so we come to my thoughts on that, that reading. And the first thing that strikes me about this reading is the attitude towards the woman with the seven husbands. Now, true, she wasn't a real woman. The Sadducees just made her up in order to make a point. But they expected that any woman in that situation, in their society, would simply do as she was told and marry the next brother to come along. They expected that she would allow herself to be given in marriage seven times. In other words, women were possessions, not independent people with opinions and minds of their own. It shows how revolutionary Jesus was when he allowed Mary to stay in the room when he was teaching. He was treating her as an independent person with opinions. And he did this all through his ministry, giving women a place that was not given to them by their families or by society in general. The Sadducees themselves were the aristocrats of Jewish society. They were well off and happy with society as it was. They did not believe that there would be a resurrection because Moses had not stated clearly and openly that there would be. So they were challenging Jesus on what they believed were easily disprovable beliefs on his part, using society norms as a starting point. The Sadducees believed that what Jesus was saying was some form of newfangled or modern heresy, that it grew out of the teachings of Daniel rather than those of Moses. And they opposed it because they thought that people who believed in eternal life would not conform to the rules of society, but that they would be much more likely to revolt and cause civil unrest. They were relying on accepted marriage practices to destroy what they thought of as a dangerous belief. Well, Jesus answers their argument in two ways. First of all, he points out that when the resurrection happens, everything will be different. He states that marriage will not happen, that no one will be given or taken in marriage. Imagine how the Sadducees felt here in that. The questions about who you will be married to are ir irrelevant, making the Sadducees question irrelevant. He also said our bodies will be different and more suitable to the resurrected state and death will be at an end. Jesus also meets the Sadducees on their own ground by quoting Moses, a prophet who the Sadducees treated with great respect, even reverence. Jesus says that Moses calls God the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God is the God of the living. So if he is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, they must be with God waiting for the resurrection, alive and not dead. But where does this argument leave us today? Well, we don't know what happens when we die. Some people believe we go to sleep until the day God's kingdom comes to earth. Some believe that we go to heaven to be with our family and friends until everyone is resurrected at the end. We simply don't know. Knowledge of heaven taken from the Bible is full of angels and cherubim and strange creatures especially if you take that knowledge from the books of Revelation and Daniel. Perhaps a more comforting vision if that is that of Jesus describing his father's house as having many rooms that he will take us to. But the fact is, again, we do not know. We don't know what heaven will look like or if our imagined heaven is real. I have visions of hills and streams possibly a beach and it's always sunny. I don't know what I will look like, but hopefully something like my younger self. We all have different ideas of what heaven is like, our own personal heaven. But in reality, 
we don't know. But what we do know is that it is there because Jesus told us so. It will be a place where God will, to quote Amos chapter 5, God will let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a, like a never-ending stream. It is a place where everyone will be treated with respect. There will be no more war, hunger, disease, fear or loneliness. It is a wonderful vision that brings comfort to many who follow Jesus and who believe that God's kingdom will one day come to earth. And of course, as followers of Jesus ourselves, we know how to get to that day. We know that our faith will get us there. As long as we believe, we will get to heaven and the resurrection. But we can do more than this. Paul says that what we do and how we live our lives is an indication of what is going on in our hearts. So we need to live good lives, helping everyone where we can, at least doing no harm, and showing to the world by our actions that we do believe in Jesus and the resurrection. There is no point in saying that we believe, but then deliberately doing harm to others. This is not what Jesus did, and it is not what we should do. The other point is we don't know when his kingdom will come. It may come in a few hundred or even a thousand years from now. Or it may just come tomorrow. But until that time, it is up to us to look after what God has provided. We need to do our best to hand on a, pla a planet that our grandchildren and great-grandchildren will be able to live in with comfort and security. The same comfort and security that we have. As individuals, we can only do a little bit. But to quote Desmond Tutu, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. As believers, it's our duty to do our little bit of good in the place where we are, whether that is recycling, donating to food bank, or helping a neighbour, or praying. And while it would be wonderful if our little bits of good overwhelm the world, there is one thing we do know. If we do these things in the name of Jesus, we will find our place in heaven. Amen. And so we come to our questions for this week. Number one, what do you think heaven is like? Number two, do you have a favourite vision of heaven that can be found in the Bible? And number three, who are you hoping to meet when you get there? And finally, number four, if you could ask Jesus one question when you get to heaven, what would it be? And so let us pray. Lord, we thank you for calling us to follow you. It isn't always easy, but we do the best that we can. We try to live good, decent lives, knowing that you have a special place for us in heaven when we go there. And we pray, Lord, for those, those that we know who perhaps don't have the faith that we do. Please turn them to you so that they also may find their place in heaven. Amen. We'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so we come to our song for this week. Immortal, invisible, reminding us that he is there in heaven waiting for us.
Hi, everybody. Have a good rest of the day and a good rest of the week. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.